Today I give you the gift of song. Hi everybody, Nikki Mara here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you've all had a fabulous week and are ready for a really fun brand new ranking video. And this one has also been very heavily requested because it's a topic we all know and love. When we experience a Disney movie or perhaps a Disney park, one of the things that we can take with us from that is the music. It tends to get stuck in our head and that's really the biggest part of the artwork that is Disney movies that sticks with us. And so today I am going to go through and rank my top 30 Disney songs of all time. And we're going to talk about them a little bit, get into some nitty gritty details, and talk all about what makes them so memorable and so wonderful. If you are excited for today's video, make sure to like and subscribe down below so that way you never miss magic from me. And if this is your first time seeing me, hi, my name is Nikki Mara and I am a Disney content creator. I started over on TikTok but have transitioned over to YouTube. So if you're from TikTok, shout out to you. Thanks for coming over and supporting the channel. I am so unbelievably grateful that you all have been loving the content so far and believe me when I say there is plenty more to come. And on that note, I wanted to let you guys know that I'm actually going to be at the Walt Disney World Resort from the 16th of June to the 24th. And seeing as I have met some wonderful internet friends over there before, if you see me in the parks, feel free to say hi. I absolutely love to meet all of you and say hi. But enough blabbing, you came here for music and that's what you shall get. Really quick before we get into the ranking, I am going to list off some disclaimers and conditions, but if you would like to jump right into the ranking, then you can head right to this timestamp. First and foremost, for our disclaimers, I am not associated with the Walt Disney Company. I do not speak for the brand or the company. All opinions in this video are just my own. And secondly, I welcome any and all opinions on this YouTube channel, so if a song that you really like doesn't make it on my list today, make sure to leave it down below and tell me why you love it so much. And if I happen to list a song that you really love, let's share in the joy. Let me know which songs you were so happy to see. And as for the conditions, our conditions are a little bit different today than every other video that we've done so far, so here are the differences. The songs that I'm going to be listing on this ranking video today come from the Walt Disney Company. Today we are not just limiting the list to animated movies, we are opening up the list today to animated movies, live action movies, Broadway productions, and also cut songs from Disney movies. Trust me when I say there are some fantastic Broadway and cut songs that I absolutely love and really want to talk about. So as long as the song was written for the Walt Disney Company, you can be guaranteed that it could be on today's list. And for each of these songs, we are going to be going over a few specific points. First and foremost, which Disney medium do they appear in? So live action, animation, Broadway, are they a cut song? We will also be going over the song's general feel, mood, emotion. If the song directly affects the plot, we'll also talk about that. And we're also going to talk about the original performers of the song, too. And with that, I think we're ready to jump into the ranking. We have a lot to talk about today, so grab yourself a drink, a snack, sit back, relax, and let's talk about my 30 favorite Disney songs. Here's your sign if you haven't had water yet today. Have some water. All right. Let's get started. Starting off at number 30 on my list is the song Baby Mine from the movie Dumbo. Now, Baby Mine is a song that will make me cry every single time I listen to it. It is a beautiful lullaby sung during a scene when Dumbo is separated from his mother and can only see her through the bars of one of the animal's carriages. It is absolutely heartbreaking seeing little baby Dumbo crying, wanting to be with his mother. But this song is so touching, so sweet, and I absolutely could not leave it off the list today. Baby Mine in the original Dumbo was sung by Betty Noyes. And in my opinion, it is just a classic staple of the Walt Disney Company. Definitely not an uplifting song, or one that I listen to on the regular because it is a very emotional song. But rest assured, every time you listen to it, it will be a memorable and emotional experience. Moving on to number 29 on my list is Bella Note from the original Lady and the Tramp. Now, Bella Note is an absolutely gorgeous duet sung between the characters Tony and Joe as a voiceover to Lady and the Tramp's date. This song is a gorgeous sweeping ballad that just perfectly encapsulates the relationship between Lady and the Tramp. It takes place during one of the most iconic scenes in the movie where they share a plate of spaghetti. And while it doesn't directly affect the plot, it is a beautiful montage song. Bella Note was originally performed by George Gavot? 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 as Tony and Bill Thompson as Joe. I love this song and I'm reminded of it every single time when I walk into the Magic Kingdom right past Tony's restaurant, which is connected to the Town Square Theater. And if you look outside on the ground, if strollers aren't parked on top of it, there's actually the little heart with the paw prints from Lady and the Tramp that you can see in the movie. Next, moving on up to number 28 on my list is You'll Be In My Heart 
from Tarzan. Now, much like Baby Mine, this song is a beautiful song meant to represent the relationship between a mother and a child. In Tarzan, the character of Kala adopts Tarzan after a series of unfortunate events that leaves Tarzan parentless and Kala childless. They find each other and create this incredibly emotional and strong bond, and they become essentially an adopted mother and son. In the movie itself, it doesn't directly affect the plot, it really is just a montage to show Tarzan being adopted by Kala. And in the original movie, the song is performed by Glenn Close as Kala, and then the song transitions into a voiceover, which is done by Phil Collins. I love this one because it's one of the few songs on the Tarzan soundtrack that is actually sung by a character. Well, at least a little bit of it. I absolutely love the animation in this song, with the camera sweeping across the scenes of the jungle and Kala rocking the baby Tarzan to bed. Oh, it is just absolutely heart-wrenching, especially after seeing what happened to both of them. Moving on up to number 27 on my list is a song that I have very recently fallen in love with, which is This Wish from Disney's newest animated movie, Wish. Now I know the music from Wish wasn't very well loved, but in my opinion, this song perfectly encapsulates 100 years of magic. Being the third song in this movie, after Welcome to Rosas and At All Costs, we've gotten to know Asha a little bit and have seen her backstory with her father, her mother, and her grandfather. I think this wish comes in at just the perfect time, because we've seen enough of Asha's story to understand where all of these emotions are coming from, and while it can very well be written off as a generic ballad, I really do think it is beautifully written and gorgeously performed. This Wish is a solo ballad song which is sung by the character Asha, and the song is, dare I say, perfectly performed by Ariana DuBose. And it is from this song that we actually get the events of the rest of the movie, as Asha making This Wish is what brings the star down and creates a lot of fun havoc that eventually frees the city of Rosas from the evil King Magnifico. And with that, we're moving on up to number 26 on my list, which is The Next Right Thing from Frozen 2. Now, it is very easy to look over Anna's two songs in the Frozen movies because Elsa is such a powerhouse and has so many incredible power ballads, and Idina Menzel's voice is, like, incomparable. However, when I heard this song for the first time in theaters, I just started bawling. The Next Right Thing is a song that, at the time, Princess Anna sings after she finds out that her sister and Olaf have both passed away. Of course, very luckily that doesn't last for a long time and they are both revived by the end of the movie. But in this moment, she has just lost arguably the two people in this world that are the closest to her. She really doesn't know how she's going to go on and she doesn't know what to do from here on out. And so she resorts to a phrase that Poppy tells her before she begins the adventure, which is to do the next right thing. This song is all about finding the next little step that can help you continue on in life, especially in a place when you are so beaten down. And it would be so wrong of me to not give the credit in this song to Kristen Bell, who I think a has a gorgeous voice, but B is not afraid to let her emotions take over in this song to give us a very real performance. I think it is quite arguable that in this song, Anna becomes one of the most realistic Disney characters. In the song, we see Anna taking these little steps to get her to where she needs to go, and the very last note of the song shows her facing the dam, which is the next right thing that she must do. This song is absolutely stunning. I could talk about it for hours, but my gosh, if you haven't heard it before and you're in the mood for a bit of a sad song, I would definitely check it out. Moving on up to number 25, an interesting one that I don't think a lot of you are going to know, which is Dance of the Robe from the Broadway musical Aida. Now, Aida is a very little known show, but it was the third Broadway musical created by Disney on Broadway as a company. Aida tells the story of a Nubian princess who is captured by the Egyptians, and she slowly but surely falls in love with the captain of the guard. It is a very dark and sad musical that does not have a happy ending. But in Act 1, Aida is reunited with a group of her people from Nubia, and they recognize her as their princess. She then decides to stand up and be the leader for them, and accepts the fact that she has to be the one to lead her people to freedom. On the original Broadway cast album, this song is performed by Heather Headley, who originated the role of Aida on Broadway. And when I say it has some of the most difficult vocals that I have ever heard in a Disney song, she belts higher and longer than Elsa in any of Elsa's songs. 
songs. And while there is a big dance break in the middle of the music, I think the underscoring is just absolutely stunning as well. If you haven't heard this song, highly recommend. And on that note, I definitely recommend to listen to the entire cast album of Aida. It is a beautiful show that does not get enough credit amongst the Disney community. Moving on up to number 24, one that many of you will recognize, which is A Smile and a Song from the movie Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Now, it could just be me, but I feel like this song is one of the most forgotten when talking about Snow White. When people bring up songs from Snow White, they usually bring up Someday My Prince Will Come, Hi Ho, and Whistle While You Work. But I love the simplicity that is with a smile and a song. Snow White has just endured a terrifying run through the woods where she has faced danger at every turn. And once she is in a safe place, animal friends start to come out and help her feel better. And she oh so lovingly sings to them with a smile and a song. The lyrics in this song are probably some of my favorite in any Disney song. There's no use in grumbling when raindrops come tumbling. Remember, you're the one who can fill the world with sunshine. It is so simple, so beautiful, but such a wonderful full moral because this song says in a world where so many things go wrong you can be the ray of sunshine that you need and i think that's such a wonderful message especially coming from our very first disney princess the song was beautifully sung by adriana casalotti and while it really doesn't affect the plot of the movie that much i think it is gorgeous and i really can't imagine snow white without this song now and with that we're going to move on up to number 23 on my list which is Out There from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Now this power ballad has everything. It has the fantastic vocals, it has the orchestrations, and it has the visuals to go along with it. In this song, we get an eyeful of Notre Dame Cathedral and the surrounding area in Paris. We understand exactly what Quasimodo wants, which is to escape his tower in Notre Dame and to go out and be among the people. Tom Holtz, who performs the role of Quasimodo, absolutely delivers this perfectly as he gets audiences to become emotionally invested in this character that we're going to be with for the rest of the movie. He makes Quasimodo such a sweet soul and his soaring voice is absolutely not to be missed in this movie. Also, quick shout out to the song Heaven's Light too, because I absolutely love that one. There just wasn't enough room on this list. Next, we're moving on up to number 22, a song title that you might not recognize, but a movie title that you definitely will, which is A Change In Me from Beauty and the Beast. Now you might be thinking, uh, what? What's that? Never heard of that one before. Well, in case you didn't know, Beauty and the Beast was the first Disney musical that was ever put on Broadway. It starred the wonderful Susan Egan as Belle, who was also the voice of Megara in Hercules. But this show actually opened without the song in it. This song was actually added later into the Broadway run when singer Tony Braxton was announced to be taking over the role of Belle. This song was specifically written for her to give Belle an act two song that would sort of tie up her story before going back to help the beast. So Tony Braxton originated this song and then it was also performed by every Belle on Broadway after her. And lucky for us, we also got a professional recording of Susan Egan, the original Belle, singing this song as well. Although I have to be completely honest, I love Tony Braxton's performance of this song. A Change in Me is such a beautiful song and while the lyrics can seem a little vague, I think it's really a song that can be sung by anyone. And I was actually lucky enough to sing this song in my senior capstone when I was in college for musical theater. Absolutely love it and has such a special place in my heart. Moving on up to number 21 on my list, sacrilegious? Maybe, but at number 21 is The Circle of Life from The Lion King. Now I love this song. This is by far my favorite opening of a Disney movie ever. I love the visuals that accompany this song, but the song itself also has so much power. The final beat that drops when the Lion King appears on screen, oh, gives me chills every single time. And everything that happens in this song really sets up the whole rest of the movie, especially at the end when we see virtually the same thing happening with the next King of the Pride Lands. While a character doesn't sing this song, it is beautifully performed as a voiceover by Carmen Twilly, and the lines that are sung in Zulu are performed by Lebo M. Again, I absolutely love this song and it's so gorgeous. The only reason why it ranks a little bit lower is because I believe it's the best part of the movie and it sits right at the beginning. Although I had to include it on the list because this one gets the blood pumping and it gets you ready for quite a saga. Moving on up to number 20 on my list is Go the Distance from the movie Hercules. Now, Go the Distance has to be one of the most amazing power ballads that has ever graced the beginning of a Disney movie. We see the young demigod Hercules brought up in a human world where he very much feels like he doesn't belong. Upon being told the truth that he's actually from the world of the 
the gods, he has this newfound passion to go out and become a true hero. And I absolutely love this vocal performance by Michael Bolton. Seeing as this song really happens in three parts, we really get to see a lot of development even within this one song. The song begins before he's told that he is born of the world of the gods. The second part happens after he's just been told and decides to go over to the temple of Zeus in order to find his fate. And the third part happens after learning from Zeus that he is the son of Zeus and that he can have his godhood restored if he proves himself a true hero. There are a lot of story elements thrown in in the middle of the song, but regardless, I think it's one of the most expansive songs ever because we really see this character sing this song with three different perspectives on life. One where he's a normal person, the next where he knows that he is special but he doesn't know quite how much, and the third knowing the full truth and then realizing what he has to do in order to reach his ultimate goal. So yes, I absolutely love Go the Distance because it is such a beautiful song, but it also helps us see quite a bit of growth in Hercules especially at the very beginning of the movie, which helps us want to root from him right from the get-go. And with that, we're moving on to number 19 on my list, which is I See the Light from Tangled. Now, visually, this is probably one of the most stunning songs that has ever been created by the Walt Disney Company. After Flynn and Rapunzel have gone on this incredible journey to help Rapunzel find out what the floating lanterns are, she finds herself in a boat in the middle of the lake, surrounded by them. With the castle on the horizon, the lights reflecting in the water, and this beautiful couple sitting in the boat together, you can't help but feel all the feelings of this song. While I do admit quite a bit that I prefer 2D animation to 3D animation, I think the only way we can really imagine this perfectly is in 3D animation. And I don't say that for a lot of scenes, so you know this one's special. <laughs> now, I See the Light allows us to look into the minds of two different Disney characters, Flynn and Rapunzel. They both come from very different places and have had very different experiences. However, it's so cool to see them come together and really share this moment. And of course, we have to hand it to Mandy Moore and Zachary Levi as as Rapunzel and Flynn Rider, because their delivery of this song is simply stunning. And with that, we're moving on up to number 18 on my list, which is God Help the Outcasts from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Now this song probably has to be my favorite song from The Hunchback to be included in the movie. We have just seen Esmeralda become trapped in the cathedral, where she looks around and sees everybody praying for something specific for themselves. And in an astounding act of selflessness, Esmeralda only prays for help for her people. I think this beautifully shows how angelic of a character Esmeralda really is, especially when she is demonized by so many people around her. We as the audience see that she is pure of heart and wonderful, whereas other characters in this movie can't see anything more than a woman who performs witchcraft, which is completely inaccurate. The song was beautifully performed by Heidi Mullenhauer as the singing voice of Esmeralda, and I think this song just perfectly encapsulates everything that the character of Esmeralda is. And if you'd like to hear more about the character of Esmeralda, she appears in my ranking Disney heroines video. I will link it up above in case you are interested. Moving on up to number 17 on my list is Someday My Prince Will Come from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Now this song is simply stunning. I love the high soprano that Adriana Casalotti brings to the role of Snow White. I think this song perfectly encapsulates a snapshot of Snow White's heart. I think that it shows that she not only is very happy in the situation she's currently in, but is also always looking for more, which is never a bad thing. Snow White can envision a beautiful future for herself and the man she loves, and I think that is a wonderful and beautiful thing. I always resort back to the visuals in this as the dwarves are looking at her with such adoration and Snow White herself sings with such a pure and open heart. Can't help but bring a smile to my face every time I listen to it. And with that, we're moving on up to number 16 on my list, which is A Whole New World from Aladdin. Now, I've admitted before that Aladdin is not my favorite movie, but this scene is undoubtedly my favorite. If anyone's gonna argue with me, it did win the Grammy for Best Original Song. Brad Kane and Leia Salonga performing the characters of Aladdin and Jasmine have voices that just soar over the beautiful orchestrations. And the animation that accompanies the music is just an absolutely wonderful depiction of Aladdin and Jasmine falling in love. And we can't forget that the carpet is there too, one of my favorite Disney sidekicks, which I made an entire video on, which I will also link for you. But yeah, I think this shows the beginning of a beautiful romance between Aladdin and Jasmine, and this song is just arguably one of the most beautiful Disney duets ever written. And with that, we're moving on up to number 15 on my list, the half 
halfway point of today's list, which is how far I'll go from the movie Moana. Now, while Moana may be one of the more recent Disney movies than a lot of other ones, it has certainly made an impact in the time that it has been released. To the point where we're getting a sequel later this year in November. But this gorgeous I Want song performed by Ali'i Cravalho as the character Moana is the perfect way to introduce this character to our audience. Every line that comes out of Ali'i's voice just sounds so truthful and honest and sincere. You can really hear the struggle in her voice when she's expressing that she wants things that she doesn't yet have. And again, it does set up plot points for the movie as she ends up going out on the water for the first time and realizing that it's not as simple as it looks. But regardless, her grandmother is there waiting on the beach when she gets back to give her the emotional support and the encouragement that she needs. This song is absolutely gorgeous. It gives us a perfect snapshot of the character Moana, and it also gives us a good look around the island of Matanui. This is one that Lin-Manuel Miranda should definitely be proud of. Up next on my list is number 14, which is Feed the Birds from the movie Mary Poppins. Now, Feed the Birds may be a very simple song, but my goodness, is it stunning. Performed by the truly incomparable Julie Andrews as Mary Poppins, this song serves as a wonderful reminder that the simplest things in life can make us happy. The Banks children have just been told that they are going on an outing with their father to the bank the next day, and Mary Poppins tells them they need to get some good rest. She sings to them about a bird woman who hands out bird feed, and while this may seem like a very simple and mundane task and one that's rather pointless, Mary Poppins goes on to tell us that perhaps the mother bird has a family of her own that needs feeding, and perhaps buying a little bag of bird feed might very well do a lot more good than one may think. And all of that wonderful meaning on top of a perfect performance by Julie Andrews. This one is absolutely not to be missed. It is so gorgeous. And it also happens to be my mother's favorite Disney song. Moving on up to number 13 on my list is Under the Sea from The Little Mermaid. Now y'all already knew there were gonna be a lot of Little Mermaid songs on this list. And we're starting off with this one. Under the Sea is a wonderful ensemble member led by the character of Sebastian to try to convince Ariel that there is a world down below the waves where she belongs. And he tries to convince her what more could she possibly want. What is so fun about this wonderful musical number is that it incorporates all of the fish that reside in the sea. A lot of them interact with Ariel and Sebastian in a lot of fun ways, and it is so fun to get to see a truly ensemble song. We hear so many different voices in this song, not just that of Samuel E. Wright as Sebastian. This song just brings unarguable joy to the screen, and while Ariel doesn't end up listening to the advice of this song in the end, I can't help but absolutely love its existence. And this one, of course, is an absolute staple in my car playlist. <laughs> Moving on up to number 12, a song that truly broke the world back in 2013 is Let It Go from Frozen. Let It Go was an absolute cultural phenomenon. This song essentially gave us another performance of Defying Gravity from Idina Menzel, but in a Disney movie, and with one of the most incredible characters that has been created within the last few decades. Queen Elsa is arguably the standout star from the Frozen series, and it is also relatively safe to say that she has some of the best songs in the franchise. And while at this point in life we all might be a little sick of Let It Go, we can't help but sing along as soon as it comes on. Let It Go is a song about self-discovery and self-ownership. Elsa finds her freedom away from the rest of the crowd. She's allowed to be her true self. And she absolutely relishes in that, creating not only a beautiful ice castle, but also a stunning ensemble for her wardrobe. The dress transformation is truly gorgeous in this scene. And with all of that compiled on top of Idina Menzel's incomparable high belting, this was a recipe for an iconic and momentous occasion in Disney music history. Next, we're moving on up to number 11 on my list, which is Be Our Guest from Beauty and the Beast. Now, while yes, I am referring to the original animated production, it is also absolutely vital that I shout out the Broadway production, which, my god, they pulled out all the stops for this musical number. Be Our Guest, which is led by Jerry Orbach as Lumiere and Angela Lansbury as Mrs. Potts, is an introduction to Belle and welcoming her into the castle. Seeing as Belle ended up in the castle in some not-so-happy circumstances, the servants of the house really want to welcome her and help her to feel like she's at home. They put together a beautiful musical number and serve her a delicious meal in order to welcome her. And in my Sidekicks video, when I said that Lumiere is a showman, there is 
is no further proof needed beyond this musical number. This is just one of those songs where you can't help but absolutely be beaming by the end of the song. It is high energy, it is fun, there are clever lyrics. It is truly a Broadway level performance in a Disney animated movie. I love this song so much, have nothing bad to say about it, and it only just barely misses my top 10. But with that, we're moving on up to number 10 on my list. And while I'm very nervous to let out my top 10, I am super excited. If you have any guesses as to what's going to be in the top 10, leave it down below. At number 10 on my list is Colors of the Wind from the movie Pocahontas. Now, while the movie Pocahontas itself does have its problems with historical and cultural depictions, there are some truly gorgeous moments in this movie. That being the musical and visual aspects of it. And Colors of the Wind serves as the pinnacle of this movie of just the artistic genius. But once again, much like Circle of Life and The Lion King, this is arguably my favorite segment in this movie. It starts out when Pocahontas and John Smith are arguing over how the land should be used, and Pocahontas shows him a point of view that he has never seen before. The words she speaks and the messages she's able to get across in this song are just wonderful. And the vocals by Judy Kuhn in this song are, oh my god, top tier. All of that mixed on top with this gorgeous visual setting that we're getting. We see the land and the nature that Pocahontas has grown up in, but we see it in a very artistic way. There are so many beautiful colors that meld into each other, and the transitions between the different scenes where they're traveling are just seamless. This is one of my favorite musical segments from any Disney movie, and it absolutely deserves a spot in the top 10. Moving on up to number nine on my list is the song Beauty and the Beast from the movie Beauty and the Beast. Oh, what I can't say about this song. Angela Lansbury's voice singing this song is just nostalgia in a song. This is, of course, the big momentous occasion when Belle and Beast have decided to have dinner and a dance together after a rather rocky start to their relationship. But we've seen them grow as friends, and this is really the first time that we see them grow together romantically. The character of Mrs. Potts delivers this perfectly beautiful love ballad as Belle and Beast soar across the dance floor. And while I absolutely love the Audible song, I do want to talk about the visuals really quick, because there are some interesting facts. The camera shot that looks like it's coming up from the chandelier moving down towards Bell and Beast was actually a 3D rendered room, and a 2D Bell and Beast were drawn in later. However, the animators weren't quite sure when the scene was being constructed that the scene would turn out exactly the way they wanted, and so their plan B was to have a simple Bell and Beast dancing in a dark room with only one spotlight. My goodness, I'm so glad it worked because I think seeing them dance in the ballroom is just unlike any other Disney scene we have seen in a long time. So yes, I absolutely love this song, I absolutely love the visuals that accompany it, and it is one of my favorite Disney love songs. Although not my favorite, that one is coming a little bit later on this list. Now come some of the songs that some of you may not recognize, and that's totally okay because I'm gonna get into them. At number eight on my list is the song Someday, a cut song from The Hunchback of Notre Dame, although it does appear in the film as the end credit song. So technically it made it in, but not in the way it was originally intended. And in the end credits, it's performed by the boy band All For One. The song Someday was originally going to be in place of God Help the Outcasts. But there is also a version existing on YouTube of Heidi Mullenhauer, the original singing voice of Esmeralda, singing to a storyboard version of this song. And it is just gorgeous. But where I think this song shines more than anywhere is in the Hunchback of Notre Dame Broadway musical. Now it's a musical that never made it to Broadway, however there is a professional vocal recording. The song is created as a duet between Esmeralda and Phoebus, and the performance given by Sierra Renee is absolutely stunning. The song also appeared in the Epcot Nighttime Spectacular Harmonious. With some more soaring vocals and all of the fireworks, this song is one that originally got the chopping block. However, it has definitely held its own in Disney music history. Moving on up to number seven on my list is the song Shadowland from The Lion King on Broadway. Shadowland is hauntingly gorgeous. If you've never heard this song, as soon as you finish this video, make sure to look it up because my gosh, this song adds so much depth to Nala as a character that we really don't get in the animated movie. The original Nala on Broadway was Heather Headley, who you might recognize as the original Aida on Broadway, which we talked about earlier on this list. And her voice is just perfection, gorgeous, stunning, 
perfect. So hearing her layered with a bunch of ensemble members who make up a pack of lionesses, <sighs> perfection. This song shows a sort of slip into hopelessness before Nala decides to go and find help for her people, or her lionesses. Truly stunning, truly gorgeous. The music is so perfect. The staging of this is beautiful. If you get a chance, definitely look it up. And not straying too far from the Broadway stage, at number six on my list, is I Can't Lose You from Frozen on Broadway. Now, I Can't Lose You wasn't in the original cast recording. It was a song that replaced, for the first time in forever, Reprise, which is the song when Elsa freezes on his heart. This song was written for the brand new cast who replaced the original Broadway cast. There is a gorgeous performance of this song here on YouTube that stars Sierra Renee as Elsa and Mackenzie Kurtz as Anna. This is by far my favorite iteration. However, there is a professional recording done by Caroline Bowman as Elsa and Caroline Innerbickler as Anna. However, last year I was lucky enough to visit the Festival of the Arts back in January, where I saw the original Anna and Elsa perform this song, which they never got to do because it was written after they left. But it was so cool to get to see Patty Murin and Casey Levy, the original Anna and Elsa, get to perform this duet. This might just be a personal taste thing, but I absolutely love this song. I think it is the perfect duet for the two sisters. And it fits so well in the score that I'm surprised it didn't appear in the original. Moving on up to number five on my list, my favorite prince and princess duet of all time is Once Upon a Dream from Sleeping Beauty. Now this song is a visual masterpiece. My goodness, the woods that are animated around Philip and Aurora, talk about a fairy tale setting. Philip and Aurora meet in the woods and are destined to be together. And it is in this song that Princess Aurora explains her dreams of a fairy tale life, meets Prince Philip, and then realizes he is her fairy tale dream. It is just set up to be the perfect romance between a prince and princess. I think the song is absolutely beautiful and the vocals on this song are just stunning. I love Mary Costa as Princess Aurora and Bill Shirley as Prince Philip. Their voices work so well together and just like Walt Disney instructed, they truly paint with their voices. Ugh, can't say enough good. I love this song so much. But with that, we're moving on up to number four on my list, which is For the First Time from the live action Little Mermaid. Now, you all know that Ariel is my favorite princess. She has always been my favorite princess and will always be my favorite princess. At least, I'm very confident in that as of right now. But when I heard and saw this song for the first time last year in the live action Little Mermaid, my gosh, I absolutely fell in love with this song. What many people don't realize about it is that it pretty much perfectly mirrors part of your world. A lot of the questions that Ariel asks in part of your world are answered in for the first time. She also realizes that there are a lot of things in the human world that are negative that she didn't really expect to find. One of my favorite lines in this song is, are my dreams adjusting? This is a concept that not a lot of Disney movies toy around with, but I think it is absolutely wonderful because normally when somebody achieves their dreams, it usually comes with some unexpected information Information that they didn't originally intend to find out. And we see that happening to Ariel in real time. And in all honesty, it makes it that much more impactful. Not even to mention that Hallie Bailey's voice is just stunning on this song. Her voice soars, especially on the incredible high notes in the end. But with that, we're gonna move on up to number three on my list, which is Almost There from The Princess and the Frog. Now, as many of you know, Princess Tiana is my second favorite princess. And this song makes her such a powerhouse of a princess. Tiana sees her entire dream coming to life before her. I love the stylistic difference of this 2D animation versus what we see in the rest of the movie. It really creates that dream sequence-like feel. And it is very safe to say that in the vocal driver's seat, Anika Nani Rose gives the performance of a lifetime. Her belting at the end of this song is perfection. She truly tells the story of Princess Diana's desires in this song, and it perfectly sets up audiences to root for her for the rest of the movie. And I think it's safe to say that a lot of us have felt the lyrics of this song. Being so close to achieving something we want and being almost there. Ugh, this one is just so perfect. I love the sound of the song, and I can listen to this anytime, any day. Moving on up to number two on my list, I think everybody could have guessed that this one was gonna be on here is When You Wish Upon a Star from Pinocchio. Now, it is safe to say that this is the official, unofficial, official, 
unofficial anthem of the Walt Disney Company. This song is everywhere. It is in the parades. It is in the fireworks. It is before every single Disney movie that Disney releases. And it truly holds the message of what Disney stands for as a whole, which is wishing upon stars and hoping that our dreams come true. The lyrics are timeless, the instrumentals tug at your heartstrings, and the vocals provided by Cliff Edwards as the original Jiminy Cricket in Pinocchio are just gorgeous. I also do want to give a quick shout out to the version done by Cynthia Erivo, who was in the live action Pinocchio as the Blue Fairy, which I didn't love as a movie as a whole, but I do love her rendition of this song. I love Cynthia Erivo, I love her voice, and I love her version of this song, but the one that does sit in my heart is the original. Just couldn't leave that out because I did want to mention her version. But yeah, When You Wish Upon a Star perfectly sets up Pinocchio, it perfectly rounds it out at the end. It is just the song of dreamers all over the world, and I can't help but absolutely love it. And at number one, could you possibly guess what it could be? Yes, at number one, to probably nobody's surprise, is Part of Your World from The Little Mermaid. Now be aware that this ranking comes with a very important stipulation. At number one is both the original animated performance, which was done by Jodie Benson, and the Halle Bailey version from the live action Little Mermaid. I cannot pick one, I will not pick one, both sit at number one for me. And here's the reason. Both of these versions of the same song give me two completely different versions of this character that both make complete and total sense. In the original animated movie, Ariel is essentially singing a monologue. She perfectly lays out everything that she wants and tells us all of her hopes and desires. And we see a more optimistic and fun-natured Ariel, which is very in line with her character. We see her optimism with all that could be with getting to the surface. However, in the live action version, Halle Bailey describes her performance as more of a desperate plea. This also makes sense for Ariel, as she is not happy in the world below the surface. She does not feel that she belongs in the Mer world, but rather in the human world. And Halle takes this internal torment and brings it out in the song, which makes it so much more desperate to get to the surface. Both of these make complete sense for the character, and I absolutely love both. This song is Ariel's heart laid out for audiences to see. It allows us to see every complex thought that she has and helps the audience to sympathize with her very early on. And in doing so, they truly root for her to get exactly what she wants throughout the rest of the movie. I love this song so much, I love this character so much, and it absolutely sits at number one on my list of favorite Disney songs. Oh, and 30 songs later, we have finally completed my list of favorite Disney songs. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had so much fun talking about all of these wonderful Disney songs. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to like and subscribe down below so that way you never miss magic from me. And if you'd like to find me on any of my other social medias, my handle is at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's. And you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. Again, thank you so much for all of the love and support. It truly means the world that you guys are loving the content I'm putting out here on YouTube. And it is hearing back from all of you that makes this such a magical experience. And that being said, if there are any specific video topics that you would like me to discuss, make sure to leave them down below so that way I can hear what you are interested in hearing about. Again, thank you so much for watching. Stay magical and enjoy the rest of your week. And I will see you all real soon.